All right. Well, I'd like to just welcome everybody to this annual State of the School uh, talk where, where you know, I'll give an overview of where we are with the school. And then the one of the really, uh, I guess, big goals is to create a dialogue, particularly with our students. Uh, so I'm going to focus in our talk on uh, student issues um, and get a conversation going on where we are with some of the different things that are going on for, from a student perspective. So the, the state of the school, it really quickly or briefly, is it's awesome. Like we're in really, really good shape. Um, our, our programs are, are growing and we've got a lot of activities to improve the curriculum and other activities. Our, our research is really off the charts in terms of the number of people we're working with, and funding levels, graduate students, et cetera. So it's just an extremely positive time for the school. And it's that way because of you. There's some faculty in the room, which is awesome. Uh, our faculty are terrific, all the work we're doing and mentoring the students. And then our students, thank you for being here. It's, it's great, you're awesome, you're fun to work with and we appreciate all that you do. So just um, high level numbers, we've grown to about 1,100 undergraduate students. And that's that's quite an increase over the past four or five years. I would say when I started this school chair, our numbers were typically in the seven to 800 undergraduates, climbed to around 900, and, and recently it's really bumped up. Our graduate students are around 850 graduate students in our program. We are one of the largest programs in the world in aerospace engineering. Um, so our graduate numbers historically have been around 500 in the past few years they've ramped up. A lot of that is for our distance uh, learning uh, opportunities, particularly at the master's level, but we've also had a big increase in our resident uh, graduate students as well. Uh, we're, because of that growth, we've been growing our faculty. So I would say historically we've had around high 30s, 37, 38 full-time equivalent uh, professors in the program. Uh, we've been hiring faculty the last several years. We're up to around 44 full-time equivalent professors, and we're on our way to having 50 uh, full-time professors in, in the school. So we are growing to meet uh, student demand and, and all that, but it takes a little bit of time. And one of the things that makes our program so great are, are our research faculty that support our research programs as well as our teaching mission. We have around 70 research faculty. And that's very, very unique nationally and internationally to have that many research faculty supporting our programs. And we also have great, great uh, administrative staff and, and uh, I'm glad to see you here, Kevin. You came in a little late, but I'm glad to see you here. <laughs> Uh, our, re our research, I mentioned, we, we've uh, increased our research. We do about $40 million in annual research at this point, and that's up from $30 million a few years ago. So uh, our faculty have, have worked really hard, particularly to win big programs. So these are usually multi-university, multi-investigator programs that are funded for three to five years in a clip. Really, really nice program, super high visibility as well. And one of the outcomes of our research are, are journal publications that go out to the whole community. And every year our faculty and students are producing new knowledge that then gets transmitted to the community. And typically around 120 unique articles come out of our school each year that have an impact on, on how aerospace is evolving. And then the other thing I wanna point out is we, we've got really tremendous students and great faculty that, that, get, that get recognized across the world. So, Right now we have four National Academy members, all of our senior faculty and most of our uh, mid-career faculty are fellows or associate fellows in aerospace societies. And, and that recognition is usually around one to 2% of the society will recognize uh, technical uh, researchers uh, with that honor. And then the other thing, if you look at all the journals uh, and all the publication venues in aerospace engineering, our faculty are either editors or associate editors of every journal in aerospace engineering. So if you look at that collectively, we're all in in aerospace, you know, we're, we're fully engaged. And I want to point out that we're starting to get recognized. So the last year we were recognized as well, tied to the top engineering undergraduate program in aerospace and our graduate program. So really, really proud of those achievements uh, in the school. 
and trying to continue that momentum and push forward into the future. I want to I want to just highlight some of our student recognition and awards because it is amazing. So um, you can read these awards here, and there's a couple points I want to make about them. These are highly competitive national awards, and I've showed this chart, these charts, every year I've been school chair, and every year we win these awards. It's just amazing what our students are winning year in and year out. So congratulations on that, and it's just a testament to the to the to our program and the students we have in our program. And it also, or we also win a lot of team awards. I highlight too. So. Super proud of the Yellow Jacket Space Program. They had a successful launch of a, of a liquid propelled rocket out on the West Coast earlier this year. A tremendous success. They continue moving on with, with higher weight, larger rockets in the future. I think we have around 200 students or more that are actively engaged in that program. Uh, and it's just incredible. Uh, another um, student group of Rotor Jackets is student drone uh, racing team, they won the National Collegiate Championship this past year. Um, we have other student groups that win, win awards as well. So it's just really impressive. And, and that's one of the highlights of our program is the ability to get involved in other activities that are outside of the classroom. And, and it, it's one of the things I've learned as school chair is, is students get a lot out of those, those extracurricular activities. And I often have people say that was one of the most important parts of my Georgia Tech education is working as part of a student group with other students to solve a difficult problem. Just wanted to take a minute to um, highlight our vision for educational programs in aerospace engineering. And it's certainly student-centered. We're, we're focused on helping students put together a good experience uh, so you learn and can, and can get a great job uh, in the future. And then when you're really famous and well give us a lot of money back and donations. So we're counting on that. But we have two major parts. First of all, is the courses we take. And we, we really focus on evolving those courses and putting together really great curriculum where you can learn a lot about aerospace and, and, and your interests. And I'll talk a little bit about one of the major changes that's gonna happen in the fall in that regard. And the second thing is what I mentioned, everything you all do outside of the classroom, whether it be design, build, and fly, or yellow jacket space uh, program, or if you're a tutor um, with mentor jackets, work on design competitions, all these things outside of classroom, we see that as an integral part of your education. So it's an in-class activities and out-of-class activities. And what we work hard to do is make sure they can combine together in a meaningful way. So that's that's really the way we view the, the overall program. I think it's been been successful. One of the parts of that is making facilities accessible to you all. So about five years ago, we started to transition a lot of our lab spaces to be shared facilities where they were accessible to students. And the poster child for this is our makerspace. Okay, a while back, professors in their labs all started buying 3D printers. We had like 20 professors that each had a nice 3D printer. We said to ourselves, this is kind of wasteful. Why don't we create one facility where we have better 3D printers and then they're maintained and serviced, and then everybody can use them. And that was really the start of the makerspace, and it's grown from there. But that idea has uh, also been uh, injected into other areas of aerospace engineering. So we have an indoor flight facility where you can go in and fly drones or test drones. You have a big motion capture system in there. And you can, again, have training. You can get trained. Students get to train. Once you're checked off, you can go in there, reserve time, and use the facilities. The wind tunnels are, are similar. We have a couple wind tunnels and we're moving that to be a shared facility as well. And we see that as a trend over, over the long term of us creating these larger, really high quality facilities that we make available to not only research labs, but also students and student teams as well. Um, I wanna to get to the meat of the presentation. So Cayetana, uh, we met a couple of weeks ago and, and and SAFAC had met and said, hey, we'd really like in, this, in the state of AE to hear about a couple things and what's going on. And I'm going to focus the talk on that and hopefully have a discussion with the students about that. So a couple items that were mentioned. One, the undergraduate, any updates to the undergraduate curriculum. And we'll talk about that in particular. Senior design is, is going to change uh, in the future. 
other thing I wanted to talk about are facilities, and, and this comes up often. You know, we are we are low on space. We all know that space is a high priority in the school, but we are trying to up, update the facilities as we can. One is the Lowy Library as well as the AE Computer Lab. We're going to be making changes to that We're in the early stages of what those changes would look like and, and how those facilities will evolve. I'll talk about that. We, we're in the process of buying shipping containers to increase the storage for student design teams. And I'll talk about that a little bit. And then two larger projects. One is the AE Hangar Building, which has been approved. It's going to uh, be in the NARA area. That should start in 2023 and, and quickly be online. And then a longer term uh, building is a new home for aerospace engineering. I'll have some updates on that as well. And then the, the last thing SpaceX requested was that we talk about the ambassador program, new program we're rolling out, hopefully starting in the fall. Um, and then also there's been, been a desire to have plugs in a classroom. Seems like a small item. We'll talk about it. It's been harder than you could think uh, for sure to get those plugs in the classroom. So. <clears throat> and just a plug for uh, SASAC, thank you very much for everything you do. Um, if you're not aware, SASAC every year will hold town halls. They they organize the state of the AE. They have different speaker uh, opportunities for students, talking to other students, and also more recently an international um, student speaker series. So the town halls, <clears throat> excuse me, that you hold are, are terrific, and that gives us a lot of feedback in the school on how to update our program. So it's invaluable, and we really, at the school level, super appreciate everything that you provide. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> first thing I'll talk about is the undergraduate curriculum and the design uh, changes. So we're going to change the AE senior design sequence. So about eight years ago, we made a change to the program where we used to have senior design as, as senior design one and senior design two, and we would specialize in fixed wing aircraft, rotorcraft, and spacecraft. That was the program. We updated our curriculum to add flexibility. So we really wanted to give you all some elective courses in the junior and senior year so you could specialize in areas that were of interest. But prior to that, you really had almost no choice. The only choice you really had was your senior design course. Did. So you all wanted more flexibility. So we literally redesigned the curriculum so you had the AE electives or options. And, and when we did that, we had to find credits somewhere. So we searched through our different courses and we found those credit hours for the AE option. One of those credits came from senior design. So we modified senior design to be a five credit sequence, two courses, the two credit design method which we would learn about system engineering and overall design processes. And the second three credit course was your senior design class. And what we found when we did that was there really wasn't enough time for you all to dig into your design. Um, so we took a look at it and we're going to return to two three credit courses, senior design one and senior design two. <clears throat> Excuse me, design one will include the design methods and all the, all the different options for senior design one, and you also work on conceptual design. So you will be able to get started on senior design in that first uh, course, design one. Second course, you'll get into preliminary mission design, fabrication and testing, depending on your, your particular project. Uh, so we'll also remove the design methods. Now that'll that'll change from five credits to design methods course and senior design to the senior design one and two. And I have to say, anytime we make these kind of changes in the program, we are we are very serious about it. And there's a lot of discussion and deliberations, lots of opinions. And and I have on the right side some of the folks that worked on the new design curriculum. And I, I think we have to uh, thank those folks for all the hard work they put in to, to create this this updated senior design program. So what's different about it and why are we excited about it? I think it gives students more flexibility to design. So we have three tracks still, but inside those tracks, we're gonna have common modules that students can, they need to have some more experience in control. So they can go to a module, video modules and other materials and learn what they need to learn and then bring that back to their 
to their particular project. So we're going to focus a lot on creating these modules that are accessible to students, and it'll enable students to work on different projects within the senior design. So we're hoping for a diversity of senior design projects that'll suit your interest. You can say, hey, I'm really interested in maybe fabricating something or testing it. Well, hopefully this will be design projects for that type of student. Other folks will want to do a conceptual design, paper study, that's fine as well. So the goal and what we see as a difference in advantage is really more flexibility and diversity of topics for, for students to engage in. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, when you have questions, and I know you will, I'm going to point to Professor Ophelein, who's our uh, associate chair for undergraduate programs, and, and he's been working this uh, heavily. So, and it's going to start in uh, fall of 23, when it all starts. So, really, really excited about that change to the program. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about is the, the Lowy Library Computer Lab. So, that computer lab looks the same today as it looked when I was a graduate student. And that was a long time ago. All right, so it, it is high time that we sort of took, took a step back and said, hey, are we using this space well? And, and does it suit students when they do all work today? Um, so we have a group that's working on that with SACEC. So again, thank you for that. Uh, and the, the first question we're kind of asking is, um, what kind of places do you all like to like to study? And why, why, do you, why do you like that? And then what would you like to see if we're going to update these facilities, the lower library as well as the computer lab? What kind of capability needs to be in those facilities, that kind of thing? So we're looking at that now. I think some early observations are that the Lowy Library would be more of a collaborative space. We'll, we'll put furniture and other items in there so that so that uh, students can collaborate. Uh, and the computer lab would be uh, and more of an individual study space. We'll have some tables and things like that, but it'll be more uh, individual. Um, and we've applied for tech fee funds that can fund any changes that we're making. So all that's positive, and that's a project that is happening right now. And if I had to guess, it'll be sometime in the fall. We'll start to see some movement and uh, things like that. Um, so the other thing we're we're buying shipping containers um, and I'm going to put them in the courtyard. So here's a great picture of the courtyard. I just took that this morning. Uh, and where we're going to put these uh, is <clears throat> up here where you see the dumpster. Short, these are 10 foot shipping containers. We'll line, I think, six of them up. Kevin, is that right? Six of them you're purchasing. Uh, and we're going to line them up and then we're going to assign them to different student groups. Uh, can kind of rent them and have access to them. So instead of storing a rocket under your bed in your dorm, you can now store it in their storage container. Okay, a little slightly safer. Okay, so we're happy about that. We realize that we need we need more space. Period, just across the board, and, and we're really trying to find space and steal space wherever we can to to satisfy not only our faculty and their research team, but also students and the work that we're all doing. So. All that's important. So we're in the process of purchasing them. I'm assuming we'll get them in the next couple months, Kevin. And, and Greg, the shop has told me that you will forklift them around and get them in the perfect location as well. All right, I'm counting on you to do that. Yeah. Um, also, the hangar facility in Nara. So uh, this is going to be about a 10,000 square foot new building that's going to be built in the Nara area. I'll talk about that in a second. And the idea here is for supporting us fabricating aircraft and, and then flying them somewhere. So this is a kind of a new facility. We have a, a research thrust or focus in electric aviation. So urban air mobility and those kinds of vehicles will have uh, an electric uh, a battery lab and a, an electric powertrain lab in that facility. There'll be uh, space for fabrication and testing, et cetera. So we're pretty excited. Again, 10,000 square foot building in the narrow area for, for our uh, research uh, in electric aviation and urban air mobility in general. So there's a rendition of the building. Uh, I'm not sure if the final building looks just like that, but it looks something like that. Uh, we did have to go through a cost cutting exercise along the way. So, um, 
The next thing I want to talk about is, you know, we if you walk around our facilities, you realize they're pretty old. I mean, again, the the AE building that I walk around in today and that you do is the same building that I experienced as a graduate student. And that was in the 1980s. Right? It was a long time ago. Um, we did have computers back then. It's still a long time ago. Um, <laughs> that's right. So, so we've been working hard to get a, a new building. We've gone through a conceptual design study uh, and, and had uh, Perkins and Will as an architecture firm. Uh, they came up with a, a concept for the building. It's around 200,000 square feet. So it's a significant increase in the square footage of our complete uh, aerospace school, um, about a seven story building. This building will more than likely, it will be built in the South by Southwest area of campus. Um, and it's been identified as one of the key buildings for our capital campaign. Uh, and usually when a building is identified in the capital campaign, it gets built. Uh, and right now there's a lot of work going on in exactly the site where we would build this building. So uh, I'll show a little bit in, in one slide about the general area, but all that is happening now. I would guess that in around three years, we'll break ground. These things take a long time uh, to, to do, but if you don't work on it now, you won't have it tomorrow. So we're putting the time and effort in to make sure we have better facilities for our faculty as well as our students. And that is a cool looking building too, I have to say. They did a great job on it. Uh, so here's the South by Southwest part of campus. So um, Tech Square, we all take it for granted, but you know, again, going back to my time as a student, uh, Tech Square did not exist. Um, you never went across the highway. It was kind of not a great air part of town. Uh, Georgia Tech purchased some land, uh, built the Georgia Tech Hotel and some academic buildings, and then private money poured in and really rejuvenated all of Midtown. And that, Midtown in the way it is today is because of the investments Georgia Tech made in that area. So super, super impressive. And Tech Square now is, is just a terrific part of campus. So we're going to do the same thing we did 20 plus years ago on the south by southwest part of campus. Georgia Tech has purchased a, about 50 acres. It's spread around that area. It's not all contiguous as one plot. Uh, and we're going to start to build new buildings in that area and really revitalize that part of Atlanta. Um, so it's pretty exciting. That's where our home will be in the south by southwest part of campus. So just to orient everybody, if I can do this, yeah, I can. So here's where we are right now in Guggenheim. Um, if you look, here's the, the Coke buildings. If you're familiar with Randall Brothers, it's an old construction company. We purchased that land, that seven acres is Georgia Tech owned. Um, there's the Wells Fargo Bank. And if you look down on the lower left, uh, that's narrow. That's the North Avenue Research Annex. And the Combustion Lab is in there. The Structures Lab is in there. The uh, Propulsion Lab, Electric Propulsion Lab is there. The um, so the narrow part of campus is being uh, improved. There's going to be landscaping. I think there's going to be a, a police presence there. So they're putting a precinct in, a local precinct right near narrow. So that whole part of campus is is evolving. And really, South by Southwest, all of this. A lot of that land. So we're hoping to land. We will land somewhere. The site is not determined yet, but we will land there with with a building that looks something like that. So pretty exciting uh, for for our future facilities, and it's it's uh, appropriate for you know, the kind of program that we we run here in aerospace engineering. So that's the facilities. I wanted to talk a little bit about. Uh, the ambassador program. So one of the things uh, that happens often is we have a lot of visitors in the school, um, and it could be it could be a high school student thinking of, of going to George Tech for their BS degree in aerospace engineering. Could be a faculty candidate that's visiting, maybe to be a future professor. It could be a, a super famous person that's giving a distinguished lecture. We have a. It could be somebody from industry. We just have. We're very dynamic. I think it's one of the really impressive and unique things about our program is that we do have just a constant flow of people coming and visiting and interacting with us. Um, a lot of those visitors would like to talk to people. 
believe it or not, they would love to meet with you and interact and see how things are going and all that. So uh, we want to formalize a program where we can identify a set of students that would be interested in and, and um, supporting visits of these different folks that I just mentioned and being a part of that. So uh, we're hoping to launch this again. I mentioned this in fall of 23, and we're in the beginning stages of figuring out the whole process of identifying student ambassadors, advertising board, et cetera, to, to, uh, to print those things. So really, really excited about that. Um, and the, the last thing I'll mention is, is plugs in classroom. So if you look around, I don't, I don't think, I don't know how many plugs we have in this large room, but it's not very many. A couple on the sides, um, 244 or 246. I don't know how many there are there, but there's not many. So, so you all brought this to us. You said, hey, that sounds like a reasonable idea. We took it to Georgia Tech. We said, we want to do this. Is it okay? And they said, no, the electrical system can't support the load uh, for that. Um, and then they also had some safety concerns with the cords and all that, which I think could be mitigated. But the electrical load part uh, is going to take a little longer. So we're going to re redouble our efforts, kind of see what we can do and, and, and what we need to do to get that. But we get it. You know, you have your laptop. A lot of times you're working on a project as part of the class and you need to plug in your piece. So how, how did you guys? You're not plugged in, obviously. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So there are a few, but it doesn't cover everybody. Yeah. So anyway, we hear you. We're working on it. Sorry, I can't tell you they're all in the classroom today, but we're getting there. Um, and then just to just to wrap, I mean, I mentioned this at the beginning. It's it's an unbelievably exciting time in aerospace for the students. You pick the right major. I mean, it's incredible the things we're going to do in space, the technology that's going to involve, and just really be a part of of you know, having a presence where people live, work, and play on the moon. Um, helping to design new transportation systems for cities where we have aircraft, many, many aircraft flying around in our suburban and urban areas and being a part of making that happen. Just un unbelievably exciting. And honestly, I've been doing this for a long time and this is far and away the most exciting time in aerospace engineering. So again, you, you all pick, pick the right major and I think you picked the right place. Uh, we have a lot going on here. It's incredible the research innovations that are occurring. Uh, we're, we're super excited. So with that, uh, I think that's what I wanted to remark formally. And I'd love to open up the dialogue for the challenges we're facing, suggestions for our program, and just talk about whatever we all want to talk about. That's it. <laughs>